Member statements. I recognize the member for Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I'm so happy to be saying this today. This past Friday, I was pleased to announce almost $2 million in new funding to support primary care in Windsor, Essex. This is incredible news that uh, this funding will connect almost 8,000 more in our community with new services in primary care much closer to home. Part of this funding will create new practitioner positions at the Community Health Centre based at the Canadian Mental Health Association Windsor Essex Branch. More health human resources will mean more patients can access the roster of services available. And part of this funding is also expanding the mobile medical support team, a mobile health care clinic that can truly go anywhere in the moment through episodic care, preventative care, or wraparound services, our vulnerable, high-risk, underserviced areas can more easily be helped. Building on the $424,525 in support for the Essex County Nurse Practitioner-led clinic just announced a few weeks ago in Kingsville, bringing more care to 1,200 county residents, the Windsor-Essex Regional Acute Care Hospital, the Mental Health and Patient Bed Expansion, Hotel Duke Grace Healthcare, and among many, many other investments, our government is investing deeply in health care in Windsor and Essex County. And under the leadership of Premier Ford and Minister Jones, our government's additional $546 million over three years for interprofessional primary care teams will connect 600,000 people with primary care closer to home. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for London West. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, London tenants got some good news last month when the City of London moved closer to joining Hamilton in preventing bad faith renovations. My office hears regularly from London West tenants about unethical landlords who use illegal renovations to remove low-income tenants and jack up rents. In the face of a dire shortage of affordable housing options, the renoviction notice can be devastating. Tenant advocacy group Acorn reports a 300 percent increase in renovations between 2017 and 2021, and those numbers continue to grow, just like the average cost of rent. Meanwhile, vacancy rates in London are at record lows. Speaker, municipalities like London are stepping in with bylaw protection because, unlike the Ford government, they recognize that illegally forcing low-income tenants out of their units when there is nowhere else for them to go is both inhumane and bad public policy. According to ACORN, London ranks fifth in the province in the number of rent eviction notices, but it's not only rent evictions that are squeezing London tenants. Above guideline increases, or AGIs, also create huge pressures for tenants with low or fixed income, and London ranks fourth in the province in the number of AGI applications typically made by big corporate landlords. Speaker, almost one-third of Londoners are renters. Why is this government doing so so little to protect them. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Brampton West. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to commend Carlside Canada for their remarkable humanitarian efforts, embodying the sick principles of selflessness and equality. As a non-profit organization, Carlside extends its support globally, exceeding religious boundaries to aid all those in need. They're currently organizing a food drive in which they aim to provide over 200,000 meals for local food banks within the GTA. This stands as a testament to, to their impactful contributions to the community. In a time marked by economic challenges, initiatives like these are invaluable in addressing the issues of hunger and food insecurity. Speaker, in April, as we recognize Sikh Heritage Month, we are reminded of the profound teachings of our gurus, emphasizing courage, selflessness, and equality. Carl said embodies these teachings and promotes the values of the Sikh religion through acts of seva, which is giving back to the community. Members of the community that can and want to draw up of donations can at select GTA Gurdwaras, including Ontario Khalsa Darbar, Guru Nanak Sikh Center, the Shmesh Darbar, and Nanak Sir until April 30th to help Khalsa aid in their goal of distributing 200,000 meals. Mr. Speaker, the founder of uh, Sikhism, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, gave us three principles to live by Naam Japna, which is remembering God, Kirt Karni, earning an honest living, and Vanshakna, sharing with the less fortunate. It is truly inspiring to see Khalsa 
living by these principles and making such a positive impact within our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. I'm wearing my grandfather's tie this morning from Clan Davison. It's part of my family's heritage. I've never sought permission to wear this tie in the House, however, and I know other members with Scottish roots have worn tartan garments too. But there was a time when the tartan was banned. For 40 years after the Battle of Culloden, as British soldiers pillaged and cleared the lands of my ancestors, the Crown banned the wearing of the tartan. That insult to my ancestors no longer exists, but sadly, Speaker, I believe that today we are carrying a similar insult to Palestinian Canadians, Arabs and Muslims when we ban the wearing of the kafayas in this house. The kafaya is a symbol of rich cultural history. I am told it represents the fishing nets, olive trees and ancient trade routes of Palestine. I believe we should be celebrating that culture in this place, Speaker, and not banning it. The ban on the kafaya in this house, in my opinion, only contributes to the rise of dehumanization, polarization and hatred that we are seeing. It divides us. Precisely at the moment when we should be doing everything among all of us to bring our people together in the broader cause of peace. I am not Palestinian, that's true. But when the civil liberties of Palestinian Canadians are under threat, Speaker, I believe it impacts every single person in this building. It is a stain on the fabric of this House, and we can together remove that stain if we stop the banning of the kafaya in this place. And I encourage us to do it right away. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this year marks the 48th anniversary of the annual Festival of the Maples in Perth, Ontario. Since 1976, Perth has celebrated a legacy of liquid gold against a backdrop of heritage architecture on the banks of the Tay River. Hosted by the Perth Chamber of Commerce, the Festival of the Maples embraces all that Lanark County has to offer with artisans, vendors, musicians, and award-winning maple producers. Some of our smaller emerging producers were recipients of recent funding through this government in partnership with the Canadian government. My thanks to Minister Thompson and the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. Through the Sustainable Canadian Agricultural Partnership, 15 successful applicants in Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston riding received a total of just over 239,000 to support the productivity and growth of their maple syrup business. Speaker, Lanark County is hailed as the maple syrup capital of Ontario, and this time of year, visitors are hiking our sugar bush trails, touring award-winning multi-generational sugar camps, and heading home with some of the finest maple syrup in the world. Throughout Lanark County, you'll find maple syrup featured in restaurants, bakeries, coffee roasters, and distilleries, all eager to embrace the sweet taste of spring. I extend a warm Lanark County welcome to the 48th Festival of the Maples this Saturday, April 27th, in Heritage, Perth. Hope to see you there. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Parkdale High Park. Speaker, the Ford Conservatives planned service reduction of the Union Pearson Express, which they walked back in less than 48 hours, reminded me that since forming government, Conservatives have, had to for have been forced to reverse their decisions multiple times, like the cuts to the Green Belt that the Auditor General reported a small group of connected developers stood to gain $8.3 billion from increased land value, and that led to an RCMP investigation. Bill 124, that kept public sector wages to 1%, reverse because they lost in the courts twice. Who can forget the notwithstanding clause suspending charter rights and freedoms used to strip education workers' right to fair bargaining? The Conservatives faced a general strike, dissolving Peel Region without first finding out the cost and the impact on public services. The region didn't dissolve, but it still cost the taxpayers millions. Massive retroactive cuts to public health only paused after pushback. It took a pandemic to realize that cuts to public health are a terrible idea and puts everyone at risk. Some just downright foolish, like introducing the blue license plates that were not visible at night and having to discontinue them. Speaker, I only list a few, but you see the pattern. 
The Conservatives have a habit of making obvious bad decisions and reversing them. The Premier says it's because he's open-minded and listens to the people. If that's true, then don't hand over public lands at Ontario Place in a secret 95-year deal, stop privatization of our health care system, stop interfering with the Ontario Energy Board and independent regulator on behalf of Enbridge. Prove it! Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. Last week was Volunteer Appreciation Week, and I was honoured to attend the Volunteer Service Awards in my riding. Volunteers are the backbone of Ontario communities, and I was honoured to recognize more than 40 outstanding volunteers in Burlington. These volunteers have committed from five years of service to 45 years of volunteer time to our community. That is truly amazing. Together, they have accumulated over 700 years and thousands of hours of their time volunteering for various organizations. The work volunteers do allow children and youth to participate in recreational and community activities and help people to experience culture and the arts. Volunteers also support seniors in our community as they participate in activities and provide supports to various religious and service organizations. Their selfless dedication and commitment make a significant and positive impact on society. Congratulations to everyone who received an award at this week's ceremony, and thank you for the many hours of volunteer service in our community. Your dedication, kindness, and support embody the very best of the Ontario spirit and help to bring communities together, inspire others, and foster a sense of inclusion and connection. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Speaker, yesterday we had the opportunity to meet with uh, Canadian Cancer Survivors Network here at Queen's Park. During their all-party cancer caucus, they stressed the necessity of cancer care as part of Ontario's health care system. One thing that they stressed was the importance of screening and early intervention to increase the likelihood of treatment and remission in individuals. This hit home for me, Speaker. Right now, communities like Wawa, Horn Payne, Shaplo, and White River are not scheduled as destination for the Screen for Life mobile cancer screening bus. Screen for Life is a vital service for rural communities who do not have regular access to cancer screenings, such as mammograms, pap tests, and tests for colon cancer. Without access to the mobile diagnostic service, residents in these communities will have to travel upwards of 250 kilometers one way, and that means they won't travel and they won't get caught early. Speaker, I share the concerns of residents who have reached out to my office about the loss of access to the cancer screening and early intervention. We must ensure that rural and remote communities in Northern Ontario are not left behind in our efforts to treat cancer across our province. My office will continue to work with the cancer care programs in Northern Ontario to make sure the services to all these communities are returned so that people can once again get timely access to cancer screening close to home. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Richmond Hill. I'm excited to share the heartwarming experience of my recent visit to the Crosby Heights Public School. The eagerness of the Grade 5 students to understand the workings of the provincial government and my role therein was truly inspiring. As I engaged with these young minds, their curiosity and enthusiasm were encouraging. They asked insightful questions and displayed a genuine interest in the legislative process and its impact on their lives. They also want to know what are my roles and what do I do at Queen's Park and how I can represent them as their, as their voice. It was a reminder of the importance of fostering civic engagement from an early age. This visit beautifully aligns with my community event, the April Monday Matters initiative that was, that was just organized recently. We strive to connect with our constituents and address issues close to their hearts. 
I am grateful of the opportunity to interact with the future leaders of our province and look forward to continue our efforts to promote civic education and engagement in our community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Perth Wellington. Uh, thank you, Speaker. It's wonderful to rise here today to, recognizing, to recognize an outstanding work of the General Manager of the Stratford and District Chamber of Commerce, Eddie Matthews. He recently announced that he will be retiring from the Chamber. I've had the privilege of working with Eddie in his capacity as General Manager during my time as a member in this Assembly for Perth Wellington, even before I arrived in this place. Eddie is a diligent and hardworking individual who always has the best interests of our business community at heart. Eddie has been with the Chamber for the past five years, and during his time as general manager, he has endured tough challenges during the COVID-19 pandemic, completely reworking the Chamber, how they ran their key events, and were there for our small businesses as they dealt with those challenges. Speaker. He was there to support our local businesses in good times and bad. And he has played a key role in expanding the Chamber of Commerce membership beyond Stratford and into the area of West Perth and St. Mary's. Speaker, before Eddie was even general manager of the Chamber, he had a long and successful career in radio. I know whatever he does next, he will succeed again. I would like to sincerely extend my gratitude to Eddie and for all of his service and leadership to our community and wish you all the best in your next chapter with Laurie. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.